roughly speaking, the following we have uh, talking about cryptography uh, libraries across the broader interchain stack, not just Comet BFT. Uh, and the main thing we want to figure out there is expectations on how uh, and what exactly uh, would be the responsibilities from the Comet team. Uh, then we're going to give a brief update on what is happening with PPTS and V1. Uh, we can also go into some of the questions that we started discussing last time about PPTS. Uh, the third topic is if the skip team is here or if they will make it in the meantime, uh, we want to describe to them some of the subtle points about adding block transactions to the verify vote method. And the fourth point, brief update on Comet BFTRS. Uh, Comet BFTRS and V1, PPTS and V1 are a bit related. So maybe I can actually just do all three at the same time. Comet BFTRS and V1 and Comet BFTRS. And we'll explain how are those related exactly once we go into the discussion. So we actually only have three big topics. Uh, for crypto libraries, who would like to take the lead on this? Ezekiel, can you give a brief context on uh, what is the initiative about and maybe help Yeah, us? sure. Thanks. Um, I have a few slides. If you want, I can oh, show. Um, that would be great. Yep. Yeah. Um, it, it's going to be uh, really quick because um, so we don't get much into the code. I think it's not necessary of the because of the co scope of this code, but I can show you like the goals and, and why we want to do this. <laughs> Uh, okay, let me share the uh, screen. Um, let me check it. I think I have a permissions issue. I don't usually use Zoom, so. Um, I think you should already be allowed to share screen, but let me know if you have uh, hiccups. Yeah, I think it's on my local computer. I have to, oh, oh I have to uh, give the permissions. Uh, one second that I, I have to oh. re restart the Zoom. Two minutes, oh. I'll be here, sorry. Yeah, yeah. in the meantime, we also have uh, Juan who managed to make it. Thanks Juan for joining. Hi, hi, hi. thank you very much. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I think Edu is also in the call. Yep, uh, yep, here. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I don't want to, to ruin the, the presentation from Ezekiel kind of like telling too much ahead, but uh, <laughs> still his thunder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, uh, th these are the typical things that happens when you have a Mac. <laughs> there we are with this. Okay, we don't hear you, Ezekiel, but we're seeing your screen, so feel free to kick it off. Yeah, sorry. No, I was uh, muted and blinded. Uh, okay. I think it's going to a slideshow. Yep. Okay. Um, so actually, uh, this idea of this project was born for applying applying uh, to the SDK. Uh, but uh, spoiler alert, we also saw that it also can be applicable uh, to the Comet VFT. Um, and also by suggestion of Marco, uh, he's also uh, found it like it, it's going to be useful on the on the consensus uh, code. So um, uh, the goals uh, mainly are to decouple and actually have a, a purely uh, a modular uh, crypto library. So we want to decouple the the, the core logics uh, of the cryptographic tools from the um, Let's say at the utility level or the or the other tool level, like the SDK and the and the common VFT uses. So also we want to uh, allow for new extens extensibility points to allow innovation because today it's very hard to add, add like a, for a, example a new curve or add a new hasher. Um, you have like um, a very tight, a very couple code. So if you want to add a new curve or anything, you have. Um, you end up like most people do, forking the entire SDK, for example, and doing your modifications there. But that doesn't sound very modular. And also um, the developer experience might be broken in there. Um, 
and may, and also it doesn't uh, it's not compatible with the uh, with um, uh, the community uh, being engaged with the project and and giving um, um, participating adding new new stuff right um, so it's like the the project it gets forked and it's it's in a repo over there and nobody knows um, and we also we, with this we we want to uh, give the opportunity to uh, keep the this library to grow by the, the community. Um, also, uh, by this we can do we can build like a, a good framework for test coverage for robust robustness, and also we can make audits uh, if if needed. Um, but uh, so this uh, this module is gonna is like a very good candidate to have like a a, a very good uh, um, uh, audit system. Um, and also with the, uh, we know that this is going to be like a very, very uh, tough uh, migration. So we we designed it in a way for uh, divided it into milestones. Um, so it's not uh, as painful for the user. So the 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 migration should be um, in a let's say in a in a, in a slow phase, but uh, allowing. Um, the, the users to migrate their code in a, let's say with the very the, the best experience as possible <laughs> so um the so that's let's say the general uh goals and now we have we will we, we will go a little bit technical um the idea is also to support give support extend the support for hardware devices and cloud-based kms uh for example uh in in today, uh, in the SDK, the, the code has support for Ledger. But for example, if you want to add like Thales, YubiKey, uh, you have to basically uh, redo all the code. So we want to do it like in a modular phase. Um, also, if you want to integrate like Azure, AWS, uh, they're using their, their, their secret services. Um, and also, this is, uh, this is all going to be based on the standard of uh, PayKey CS11. Um, so that's uh, in that standard is all, all almost all pretty well defined, um, and also in the with the make easier to interface with the GPM, and so a little bit uh, in the extensibility point. Um, yeah, the techniques are going to be dependency injection. We using plugins or or whatever another another uh, technique that we figure out at implementation time that can. Uh, uh, make the code uh, easier to extend and also to maintain, to test, and uh, and also the, the end user should find it like uh, easier uh, to contribute and to build new stuff. That is the the, the main goal. Um, so yeah, the cryptography, the, as I say, uh, said before, we want to be able to add like, uh, easily uh, new elliptic curves, um, threshold schemes, uh, support new tech, uh, be future proof, um, so next one. Uh, okay, so um, a little bit of the architecture to uh, give like a very high level uh, the idea of the design. I, I will not go much into the code. There is a few slides of the code, but um, the the general idea is to have like levels of abstract abstraction in the crypto in this new library. So um, if we start from from the the top part. We will find the actual uh, crypto tools. We have, for example, the hasher, verifier, signer, callers, encoders, um, and that will be uh, provided by a new class that we call crypto provider. That is uh, an, an abstraction for all these uh, crypto tools. Um, so below the crypto provider, um, we have this. So we have the assistance of the crypto provider that it provides us with the tools, with the crypto tools. So at this stage is where um, you can customize your crypto provider with the curve that you want, with the hasher that, that you want, with all the, the, the things that, that you need. Uh, so that's the, the crypto provider. And going a, le a level uh, below that or up, let's uh, yeah, it's up. Uh, we have the secure item. Um, the secure item is where this crypto provider is going to be going to be stored, um, and this secure item is stored in what we call the secure storage. Um, the secure storage is mm, 
pretty much like the keyring that there is in the in the SDK right now, but not like it. But it, it, the idea is to decouple what is a crypto provider and where we store it, how we store it, that will be the secure item, and where we store it in the secure storage. So with this, uh, it will be possible to have a crypto provider, not only on, let's say, on a local computer, but uh, it could be in a remote uh, location. And also could be another blockchain that acts, acts as a secure storage. Um, so on top of that, on top of, on top of the secure storage, we have the, the new keyring, let's say the keyring B2, that it actually manages all the secure storages and it's like a, the, the main API for getting all your secure items and all your crypto providers. So um, a, a, a small note on the keyring and on the wallet. Um, there is a, one important thing uh, to uh, divide um, the, 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 the keyring and all the items below are using um, public keys, but they're the raw public keys without any address formatting at all. So that's why the wallet, the wallet is like, a, uh, it's also a, will be an API for the keyring, but uh, it, there is where you will add your logic for converting the, the public keys to actually the, to the proper address. So uh, having that uh, having that breakdown at that specific level, I think it's uh, we think this is, is going to be uh, very useful. So we don't have uh, mix we don't mix addresses with public keys on on all the the levels of the code. Um, okay, so yeah, so a, a little bit about each one. I, I think I already said everything about them. Yeah, the, the crypto provider is the the um, is this. Um, Entity that allows you to generate, derive, sign, verify, encrypt, decrypt uh, all the let's say the, the crypto tools. Uh, it will be like the Swiss knife that you open what you want and you get the, your your job done. Um, yeah, uh, this is a little bit of the code, but I I won't uh, be too much into it because uh, it's out of scope. Um, but yeah, everything will be interfaces, so for easier extens extensibility and modularity. Um, so yeah, the keyring, um, as I said, it's pretty similar to the, the, key, the current keyring that the SDK has, but, uh, the main difference is that it stores, uh, it has, uh, the locations of the secure storages, um, it ha yeah, and by that, uh, you can get your secure items instead of, uh, records that, uh, in the current code, you have records. Now you have like secure items. And secure storage is location, that, so you you have it like a decouple. You don't depend on a local machine or anything. You can have it distributed if you want. Um, and also, as I said before, it decouples the raw public key from the uh, thirty two addresses or whatever uh, format you want from for your addresses. Um, and also, it acts like uh, for a router, a router for all the the different uh, crypto providers that we well, that you can have all. Uh, every type of crypto provider that you, that you want. Uh, yeah, a little bit of the code, uh, out of scope. Um, so the secure storage, as I, as I said, uh, it's uh, our locations of, uh, of vaults, let's say, like a, a different type of vaults. Um, so a vault can be um, uh, it pre pretty much uh, what the hearing supports now, like uh, you can have like a vault in memory for doing quick death. Uh, you can have a keychain uh, for Mac. Um, you can have, um, for example, your uh, your ledger device, your, uh, no ledger, um, another secure storing hardware, a specific hardware device. Um, they all, they will all implement one, uh, one interface that will be the secure storage interface, and then the driver. Uh, that's where uh, the the developers will implement, and and they can give support to any type of uh, storage. So uh, this secure storage stores secure items. Um, these secure items, in short, they are a serialized version of the crypto provider. The crypto provider uh, it can be a protobuf messages with. Uh, with saying, uh, okay, for this crypto provider, we are going to use this curve, uh, this verifier, this hasher with this configuration. 
and and or with this secret and and you can point to the secret the secret can be in the same secure storage let's say or can be stored elsewhere uh, it, so it, you can have a reference to another um, crypto provider that it's the actual secret your your private key or you can have it all together um so the the, the well, okay with the secure item uh you you deserialize it and you have all the instructions and all, everything you need to rebuild the crypto provider and and just use it uh, a little bit of the code more code uh, yeah it's pretty straightforward if you want to read a little bit of the code it's on the uh, it's on the pr of the adr um yeah so a little bit more of the wallet of what i said before uh it's a wrap it's let's say it's a wrapper for the keyring um service and it maps pub keys with addresses and it will be like the the main uh, application interface is what the the users uh, and the modules were mostly uh, interact with uh, more um yeah so that's the wallet um so a little bit of the roadmap um so right now we are in phase one uh we went, we already have the uh, the, uh, the pr for the idea um so uh, we were uh, like reviewing it um, uh, until a few days ago. So in the phase one, we'll be finishing the, the design, uh, approving the ADR and doing some uh, proof of concept code and then starting to uh, getting into the mod modularization, the, the refactoring process. And also um, at that, that stage, uh, we also want to keep support for all the legacy, the the, the legacy crypto library that the, the SDK uh, has, so we don't uh, break any uh, everything at once. And in the phase two, uh, there is the extensibility and the enhancement part that will be adding new stuff. So the phase one will be like preparing everything, preparing the the framework uh, that uh, that will support what the curves and all the crypto tools that we have now. And in, in then in phase two, um, it will also uh, we can do like ex, um, add new uh, new support for new hardware, adding new curves or whatever, whatever is needed. And also the community can be engaged in this and uh, this part because uh, we want also people to implement new stuff and build the, the new plugins and, and uh, any crypto tool that they want. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I know I went a little bit, uh, fast, but yeah, I'm, we are open to, uh, questions if you have. Thanks, Ezekiel. So just, just want to add on from my side, it'd be like, I, I think it's really worth aligning the SDK and comment cryptography libraries, um, we've had like diff we did it at one point and then we differentiated and now we kind of have this like weird limbo that we both implement different cryptographies and different curves um for different purposes and they don't really share in uh, aligned interfaces so if like comet wanted to implement something new it's like they did their own interface and it's like in the future we have to do it um for whatever whatever purposes so like aligning our cryptography stories and I think the main thing out of like the crypto v2 that I think is most useful for um for comet is mainly like the the interfaces like the hasher interface the verifying interface and, and stuff like that um maybe less so like related to the keyring yeah I was gonna start just with that because at the very crude level there's like two surfaces of crypto libraries the one in SDK and the one in Comet and they don't intersect in that many places, but if there is a, such a overlap or intersection, and I guess there is, uh, you're suggesting that with this uh, revamping effort in the SDK, we might as well also uh, oh. use from Comet side some of the work that you guys are doing. Is there like the highest level understanding of what this entails? And we would just reuse I think, the interface. Yeah, we. I jump in and as again you, you can add like more so, sorry. Um is is that the idea is that the key ring probably is not applicable, but everything that is called crypto provider and below it will be because then you can add, for example, access to TPM or remote signers. I mean, right now that there is a single remote signer that is like through 
So this is like a TCP or UDP. I, I can't remember exactly. I did that like long time ago uh, for for a signatory, but. But in the end, it's like all these things, we, we can like abstract them away. And anyone that wants to, for example, integrate something natively or, or improve the curves or, or change anything inside comment, um, we have a, an abstraction for public keys for, for kind of like asymmetric signatures and, and everything is decoupled. So then you can extend that through crypto providers in any way. Probably uh, as, as you were like saying, and the same as Marco was saying, I mean, there are some, some points where uh, there is a lot of opportunities for reuse. There is others, like for example, wallet that maybe you you okay, but you don't care. But that's that's a kind of like much higher layer. I don't know if say if you can add something more on top of that, or if you want. No, no, I, I, yeah, I was just going to say almost the same. Um, the the <laughs> idea is that uh, this uh, the ADR should be applicable one one on one with this. The uh, I mean the same. Uh, code that will work in the SDK. Uh, the idea is that it should work also in, in the same form in, in Comet. I, I can give you one example that I mean, I, I know it has been like requested like multiple times in the past. That is like, I mean, we, we said that it's compatible. The idea is it's not, we are not going to implement PKCS 11, but we are going to have that kind of like the API and the interface is inspired on PKCS 11, but then. Because it's simple, we can like create a PKCS 11 plugin. And this is something that has been discussed like a lot of time in the in the last few years when you want to use a, an enterprise level HSM, like for example, a Talis card or something that is like much more expensive, uh, especially in, in, in kind of like more kind of uh, corporate uh, environments. Um, constantly I have been asked, it's like, can we have like PKCS 11 support? And so this is one of the things, but you can also use like a TPM, in, in kind of like normal servers on-prem, or you can use like, I don't know, Amazon KMS. The idea is to kind of like, not, not that we're going to implement it on that, but that, that you have a kind of like clear, unique interface where anyone can implement. And the implementation can be like local Go code, or it can be a, a kind of like plugin when you have like TCP and, and something is like completely remote. Yeah. So okay. that, that's the kind of the, the core thing that where we see value for common. Okay. For uh, for remote signers, for instance, for validators, or yeah, yeah. But, okay. but when we implement that, it can also work in Cosmos. So I mean, yeah. anything that is developed on one side can work on the other. Okay. For me, the main question, and I'll give it to Sergio now. Uh, but the main question, maybe you'll touch on this, Sergio. The main question is, uh, what could be like concrete next steps? Are are, are we expected to uh, to come and contribute to the ADR and kind of figure out requirements from Comet side? Are we expected to to CPRs from you guys, or are we expected to simply keep the ADR in mind? And when we do modularity efforts in Comet, to come to you and to tell uh, to tell you, hey, we're doing this refactoring, uh, we're gonna need this crypto library. Uh, can we just kick it out of Comet code base and just adopt it from this uh, third uh, library of kind of shared cryptos? Uh, but I'll let Sergio go, and then we can go into this kind of more logistical, concrete next steps uh, afterwards, because maybe you will touch. Yeah, thank you, Eddie. So I actually have a few, just a few couple of uh, clarifying questions. So my first question is actually uh, aimed at Marco. So I'm just like, no, okay, thanks for the presentation. That was awesome. Uh, my question to Marco is, is the the PR that I actually, I'm actually going through it, by the way, sorry, I didn't tell you, I am about to post my review of that. I understand what you're doing now. We may discuss later on, probably not now. That is, that is ongoing, that's no problem. But my clarifying question to you is, is that PR and the three or four issues you've been um, you've, you've, you've been filing against uh, Comet BFT, is the, the root reason these presentations we, see, we saw today? Uh, yes and no. So I, I'd say I was, um, I was gonna share that as like a, a perfect example of like how aligning interfaces could remedy the situation that like I had to deal with like um, a week or two ago where I had to like fork Comet and then fork the SDK to add BLS. Um, and I had to basically implement BLS twice, um, once in the SDK and once in Comet uh, with two different interfaces. Um, but uh, I think this uh, this more so came about, uh, so I shared the initial document like back in November or December with Thane. Um, to get initial feedback and then it kind of died down and then at the ICF retreat um, it came back up and um, it really like uh, one of the subjects at the ICF retreat was like defragmentation of parts of the stack 
um, but also defragmentation uh, across many other things. Okay. And I thought like, if we can align on our cryptography, like it's like a good first step instead of having like two implementations of everything. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's like, yes and no. I think it's like uh, me dealing with having to fork and implement like BLS in Comet and then SDK like the last weekend or the weekend before, like really ignited a fire in me to like, okay, like I think we really need this really badly. Um, but uh, I was for this even before that. Okay, so if I understood well, the no part of your answer is that, so the yes, I understand. Sorry, the, 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 the no part I understand is this PLS exercise you were doing. The yes part, that's the thing I think I'm trying to understand and is relevant for the rest of this, this audience is, that you think that what has been presented in this, in you know, that Ezekiel shared with us, is basically relevant for that thing, for that particular thing. I'm just try just trying to see if we can tackle both of them at the same time, or is actually two different things. Yeah, I I, I do think it's relevant for like, uh, comment will need a, a few more changes um, to like allow adding curves more dynamically, um, like just like higher level changes, but. It, it like the the two issues that I opened would essentially be closed with the adoption of uh, like this ADR and the interfaces. Okay, thank you. And then, so the next, my next clarifying question, and probably the last, is actually to the Zondax team that presented, and this I haven't present is overlapping with uh, Alice's intentions, which is you know I I kind of understood what you guys are doing here. What I would like to better understand is what are the points where it actually matches, you know, meets Comet and what in concrete, like, I don't know that we're not going to come up with a design today, but just at least just have an idea, you know, like what it is it that, you know, the part relevant part of your presentation to us and, and have a preliminary ideas discussed. But I think that joins uh, Adi's proposal of uh, discussing next steps. So maybe we can go with that. Yeah, I, I can I can give you one part of the answer. Maybe I uh, can complement this. Um, I mean, the the main points that are going to kind of like affect Comet are the abstraction behind uh, behind like public keys, private keys, signers, and verifiers. Uh, it might affect a bit uh, if we want to have like secure storage, um, the the parts where we encrypt and decrypt. But in general, it's going to be mostly about like um, asymmetric encryption, uh, asymmetric signatures. Um, the the other part that can be useful is everything about like remote signers or anything that is related to to security because in that way we can like ensure that we can delegate not just like to local code but external code and, and kind of like uh, make that more extensible um, and I guess like from a point of view of effort obviously we need to go at, at, we need to go and revise the code if now seeing that there is interest or not but I can imagine that um, it might require like creating like in like creating kind of like more clear interfaces so so the code can be properly decoupled and do some kind of like more extensive testing between the two layers so so we have like kind of a more reliable way um it might help also uh, in general like the the overall security so when you have like a, so for example you have like things like horcracks that are used by a lot of people uh, it would be very easy to kind of like create a plugin that horcracks can integrate more more kind of like easily or you can use like different ways of like kind of like running these. And at the same time, it might facilitate because eventually you might want to do something where, or even kind of like the whole thing about like how validators operate, like for example, double signing uh, protection or things like that can be kind of like delegated, like similar to what it was done in the very early days when, when to be honest, it, it was more like a hack than a kind of like a clean implementation because of the structure. And I can't imagine that has been like kind of like rolling and rolling and growing. But when, when you have like remote signers for ledger or, or, or a signatory, that it was already kind of like not so easy to plug that in. And then you have like a lot of kind of like complex code for like kind of connecting out and all these kind of like special code that can be now decoupled through clean interfaces and all these things can be like whether it, so like depending on the design, like people can decide if they want to run like that, like in process or or everything like has plugins that run out of process. And we have the kind of like the only interface is just a proto of, let's say, gRPC connection. We we this is this is kind of like where where Tiffin can get like a lot better with, because you can like separate all these kind of functionality out of comment mm -hmm. and be make that extensible. 
So let me summarize. Uh, would you see that could be like, you know, in that for, in, for mutual interest would be key management, like the public key, the private key, all the operations with, with that, uh, and signing, whether it's, you know, signing like a local signer or remote signer. I know that today we have like the TCP code in, you know, and it would be like, okay, why don't we just abstract this away so that people could actually implement other mechanisms, you know, other than the one we have today. So if somebody wants to implement another mechanism for remote signing, for instance, they don't have to fork us. Is, is, is that a good... Um, Summary. Yeah, correct. Correct. And, oh, and there, is something, there is something that it is it maybe is not so obvious, but um, when when for example you have remote signers, that may, this affects also kind of like more SDK than common, I would say. But but when you have remote signers, uh, the private keys are never available. But you may have an abstraction of the private key inside the code. What what, what this decoupling makes is that. You, there are situations where you cannot actually request the private key at any time because actually it cannot be taken out of the HSM. And what, the reason we kind of created this uh, provider concept is because the only thing that is kept inside the provider is a reference to how to connect to the device that has that private key. So, so in a way, like separates all these things and the objects of private key will never exist in, in, mm -hmm. in memory. They will be kind of like outside in a secure element. Thanks, one. Uh, I see Sergio is satisfied. Uh, Andy, did you want to say something? Um, I, I was going to, I think you want to touch uh, a little bit based on that. And Marco was just saying, uh, so my understanding is like, for example, in Comet right now, we have our own crypto module, let's say, right, where we define our own key, private key, abstraction. And on the SDK side, we have the same look. Sometimes the code is, it looks exactly the same, but it's not exactly the same. So I think with the ADR, you create these uh, concepts of hub key interfaces, private key interfaces. And if we use those abstractions from this ADR, then we could, uh, in a way, directly just uh, make sure we're in sync, right? Yeah, correct. We, we also uh, thought already, for example, things like um, signature aggregation for, for certain curves, or if, if the curve is not a curve, but it's like a lattice or is something different. We we also kind of like struck that away. So so we we, we can like uh, generalize that. So later when someone wants to run some implementation from some new curve, where that is, I mean the, the idea is, is that in most cases you will not write the cryptography. What you will do is like create abstractions because the cryptography already comes in yeah. in Go or or something yeah. else or is yeah. some hardware and it's the RPC. But but the idea is to kind of like decouple the codes or so then you can like upgrade this easily without having a, an effect on the code every time you add something. Yep. Sergio, we should wrap this in two minutes. And yeah, yeah, just just two, more, two small comments to Juan. So yeah, signature aggregation, very good. Just uh, bear, bear in mind in terms of, like you guys were saying like, you know, milestones and stuff, like the signature aggreg aggregation is something that we kind of just put off the shelf in our in our vanilla code because that would be breaking the block format and breaking the more for block format would require all uh, chains upgrading to that version to hard fork. That is something at this point the, of maturity in the ecosystem, we know it's not going to happen. So before we are able to do signature aggregation in Comet, like using it in the block format, exploiting it somehow to, to gain scalability, we need to f solve a problem first, which is uh, commonly known as soft upgrades, which is how, what are the solutions we provide, you know, the ecosystem for a chain to change the format without having troubles in terms of like when somebody's catching up, etc. And this is something we still need to do. We, we, it was all very, very important all the time, but we always had something more important than that. So that is kind of blocking us, for instance, from implementing DLS in a way that you know all chains could. You know, if you start a new chain, you don't care about hard fork. But yeah, for for existing chains, that is basically a no go. And there was another. Ah, yeah, uh, from Ezekiel, the the um, he said at the beginning he mentioned hashing. Hashing is a little bit similar. So. I understand that I understand the value of you know putting hashing out of you know out of us, but again, the, you know the way I understand our own code, hashing is kind of all over the place. So it would take a little bit more effort. That would could be done easier than uh, aggregation, but it would be a, it would take probably a, a little more, bit more effort to kind of you know uh, refactor our code so that it's amenable for you know for modularization. So if I had to say propose milestones, I would actually go for the th first three things that you Juan mentioned and leave the other two for later. Yeah, uh, aggregation is, is on the interface. You don't need to use it. So, I mean, we will provide that. And maybe, I mean, imagine that you have a Boolean that says this allow aggregation, then in your code, you call it. If not, you don't call it. So that, that's not a problem. With hashing, it's a bit more complicated, but uh, maybe it's not in the scope of the code. 
but uh, some devices need to hash inside the device. Like for example, a ledger device, the hash is part of the device. So when you say sign, the hash happens on the device. Uh, and that, that's why we try to extract that away and, and, and combine them. But uh, yeah, but this is something, I, I don't think that these are going, going to be kind of like big problems and, and, and we can like progressively add like a uh, functionality. Uh, but obviously this is something that, that SA and, and the team and, and me, we need to kind of like go into the code and later make an assessment. I mean, they, this was a, um, from our side and, and I guess like from Marco perspective too, kind of an early uh, check with you to say, okay, should we look mm -hmm. at this or not? I mean, yeah, I think, I think we're on board. Yeah. Let's, let's do it for, for concrete next steps on our side. I mean, until you guys merge the ADR and actually start the uh, the legwork with the with the new interfaces and introducing them, testing and all that. In the meantime, what we're going to do in Comet is actually fix the, the PRs and the issues that Sergio just mentioned earlier, the ones that Marco opened. Uh, so providing a uh, smoother ability for change to use different curves in Comet, that's super important for us. Uh, and that will easily take two, three months until, uh, until we land it. It will likely go in V1.1. Uh, and that's kind of like a big priority for us. Uh, and then once we have that, we could look at kind of iterating on the interfaces we're going to land there so that we adopt some of the backends and the interfaces that you guys have. Okay. I, I, know, I know this is more for later, but does it make sense that that at some point we we plan, I mean, we make in, you know, our plan and proposal to you guys uh, that we help with the carving of the interfaces? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, could, we, we can collaborate on the same uh, code. We could already, yeah, if you want to already weigh in, like in the, in the next month on uh, on how we're, how we're planning to introduce this new register API so that the application registers to comment the exact curve that he wants to use, the keepers, uh, the keeper types and so on. Uh, I think that would already be useful. Kind of the earlier, the better, but we also understand that it we can also do it iteratively. We can just land on like an initial solution that it's kind of hacky, and then you guys can come and uh, help us consolidate with the SDK. I think either way it works, depending on your availability and time. You're muted. Sorry, sorry answering oh, sorry. Andy's uh, question. So the interfaces are, are inside like Comet BFT, but uh, if you comply with the interface, the way you connect to the plugin, it depends on the implementation. So in general, yeah. what SA was describing was more like a gRPC connection. So the plugin talks gRPC outside and then Comet as these kind of like interface. So in the end, if you want to use Rust, you would be talking in gRPC and that's it. So it's something like what we, I don't know if you guys, you guys are familiar with ABCI, our ABCI interface. I know it's a totally different matter. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the end, in the end, it would, it would be, be something like, like, like different, well. like a TCP, gRPC, or even like you, if you want to basically, uh, you know, as the SDK does, just link everything together because everything is in Go. Yeah. Something like this. And, yeah, and, and then the, the SDK has a few reference implementations for the normal cryptography that is being used today. And in the future, like other people will start like adding whatever they want and talk that common interface. Yeah, two, two more things, Andy. Yeah. One last clarifying question I forgot before, uh, and mm -hmm. then something. So the last clarifying question is like, it is very important for us that third parties would in, so I, I understand that we have to align on interfaces. And, and this kind of like the nature of that, like whether it's going to be local, the gRPC, whatever. But it is very important for us that, uh, you know, third parties could easily come and say, okay, I just want to use my own code and I want to implement this interface against, you know, against Comet. Is that, uh, would that kind of be feasible in your opinion? Uh, a new I'll, curve I'll... that I, that you guys are not supporting and some other, you know, some change say, I want to support this. this is You're you talking about like cryptography what, what I want to have. Doing? Uh, like like uh, the yes. end result once we are collecting yeah, yeah. done. I mean basically is... the, the plan is that we don't I mean later we can do that and we can agree with Marco if, if, if it makes sense on the SDK or where but initially we're going to kind of like just do the interfaces and do a few reference implementations for the curves that are happening now and then you can take that reference implementation and, and fill it up with anything you want I mean in the end, the, the hope is that we Perfect. our Absolutely. interface is flexible enough for, for all those. So I think with SA, the roadmap was to do uh, implementations of the most different ones, not not to go for all the, I don't know, elliptic curve, because then it's like easy, but go like very strange, like, okay, one elliptic curve, one, one KMS in the cloud, and one that is talking gRPC with something silly on the other side. So you have like the three classic cases and then, Anyone else can come in and, and put what they want. 
Uh, just, just I quickly. see slate, so I'll, oh. I'll keep. I'll keep. Then I, I won't say the last one. So thanks, Sergio. Marco. So, uh, so just quickly, since since we are aligned um, on this path forward, um, in the last working group with SA, we we discussed like okay, like if Comet's not aligned, we'll do it. We'll keep it in SDK. If Comet is aligned, then we can create a like crypto package in the Cosmos org. Uh, uh, sorry, not package. A uh, crypto repository, um, and then like. Uh, SA and the Zonex team are like free to um, start implementing. And so it's like you guys aren't dependent on something within the SDK repo. It's like it can live on its own. And like we aren't blocking um, SA and Juan and his team um, uh, from like going forward. Um, so I think like, I, I'd say like the next actionable would be there. And then maybe uh, SA, what do you think about like we, should we move the ADR from the SDK to? the the crypto package as like maybe the first PR or the second PR and then we can have a have a more generalized discussion there I, I like from the SDK side I, I think we're aligned on everything in the ADR um so just anything that Sergio would like to comment on the comment team for us the, the the location of the ADR is not super important I I glanced through the ADR and I will give it to Sergio and Anton and we could we will have a look there's not much in there that applies directly to to comment code base. Uh, though, though I'm probably missing some things, so we should we should probably review it. The location where the ADR sits is not super important for us. I think something that's clear, like, Adi. Let me let me know if if I'm wrong, but something that's clear from this conversation is that we need a further meeting on this. Okay, <laughs> let's do that. Then. No, I'll I mean like to, to better let's, to better align. You know, uh, we we have a we have a working group call. Maybe like SA or Edu. Um, we can just add the the comment team. Please add to, Sergio to and working me. group call. Yeah, yeah, and Anto, and then. And then and then uh, I do I say one. I'll I'll create a crypto repo and give you guys admin, and then um, I'll, I'll do that right now. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, I guess the the only thing. I mean, this is more administrative, but maybe we need to um, tell ICF that there is a new repo, so they know that it's still kind of like within scope and on organize that. But yeah, that's perfect. Then, uh, thanks, Sergio, for uh, holding the last question, and we'll we'll just uh, discuss it in the next conversation with the uh, SDK and the Zondex team. So moving on, we were running out of time. I was uh, naively, as usual, hoping we we're going to finish before uh, before uh, six p.m. sharp. But uh, if anyone from the Skip team is here, the next most impo important topic on the agenda was uh, discussing with them and with the other teams interested. Uh, that uh, what they proposed was to add the data, the block transactions in the verify vote method. Is there anyone from Skip team? If not, we can just proceed to the last point, which is just an update. Or if anyone else in the call wants to know about adding block transactions to verify vote method, we can also just discuss it. I, I would like to know. <laughs> cool, uh, was was suspecting that. Then, uh, thanks, Bez. Uh, so yep. I, um, maybe I should let you talk, Sergio, because you it might be useful to just go into the technical details. Let's just give a brief overview on why it's, let's say, technically difficult. You want to take it, Sergio? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks. So, so yeah, the, the, the message here, as Adi said, is that it is way more involved than we've initially thought, and so like we would like to know how important and how you know how broken the use case would be without this okay so we need to basically to 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 balance because we have limited bandwidth etc balance how important it is for applications and and so how 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 and so why 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 this the thing is that when we added it to extend vote that was a piece of cake because of the way the algorithm works the algorithm works in such a way that you are only extending votes you are only going to vote I mean, pre-commit if you want, but to be more, more precise. Once you have the block, you need to have the block. That's part of the algorithm. And therefore, in order to add it to the interface, it was a piece of cake because the, you know, the data was there. We just needed to you know, refactor a couple of you know, internal calls and stuff, and, and we just basically provided the data. It was kind of like, I don't know, 20 minutes of work. However, we looked uh, this week, we looked into this, uh, like uh, doing, doing the symmetric thing for very fiber extension, and that's way more complicated. Why? Because very fiber extension is it can come at any time. Remember, this is a commit from some other process. So yeah, you know that the other process has the block, but it doesn't mean that you do have the block as well. So if you don't have the block, you cannot produce the, you know, you cannot get the data that we are actually 
planning to add here. And so we have a big problem. Now, is it, it can be dissolved? Yes, it can be solved. The best solution we know of so far uh, after our discussions would be changing the logic and consensus so that we defer locally. And then basically we we process all deferred pre-commits where we know now that the block is there and, and, and that's it. But as you can see, you know, for those familiar with the consensus code, this is a very kind of sizable change and also so like risky because there are things like okay what happens you can be attacked you can people can send you votes because they know you're not verifying them right away so it can explode your memory there are a whole whole lot of corner cases we'd have to look into it now if we have to do it we will do it no problem we just want to know because we have other priorities and we want to know how and that's why we wanted to raise it here with the skip false because those those are the ones one of the teams that that came up with this with this uh, request we would like to know how important it is for uh, like really understand the use case uh, to ask you know to to assess how urgent how important this is uh, with respect to the rest of uh, of the priorities that we have. I don't know if that was too long. So perfect. Yeah, I just want to clarify. So the the proposal or request was to add the block proposal to verify vote extension. Yeah, in particular the transactions. So add the, the blocks transactions, transactions. You are you are you are that that vote refers to. Hmm. And this is from the previous uh, block or the currently proposed block? So it's it's the current block. It is supposed to be the current block because that's where you know. Remember, like the the way the way it goes is if you get too late or too early votes, you discard them, right? Mm -hmm. But still, but still, when you get those uh, pre commits, you might still be like re receiving the proposal mm -hmm. because yeah, because the vote is from another node. So it's of course you know the the other node has the the the, the block. But you might not have the block yet. So what do you do? You cannot. So the way the code is written today, of course, this was not thought for that. And so, and so basically, you, you have to, you know, you handle that uh, that uh, that vote, and with this extension, you're handling it on the spot. You say, okay, uh, verify the extension, please, application. Okay, verify. It. Okay, so the vote counts. Let's 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 just keep it in the you know the right structure, and then when we receive the the finally we receive the block. If it happens, for instance, just an example, that all the pre commits are already there. You find out, you you move directly to a decision. You don't need, you know, and so that's the way it works today. But uh, yeah, uh, the fact that we have you know if we need if we need to 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 make that data available at very five or section time, that means that you ha we have to modify the core logic of consensus. As I as I said, I think in principle from our discussions, it is too feasible, but it is it is not it's, it is far from trivial. Far from trivial. Yeah, I mean I I, I obviously can't. Uh, speak for Skip, but I, I, I can't really, I can't think of any major use cases where you would want the transactions and the verify step. Um, unfortunately, so we would probably need them on this call. Yeah. So the the, oh. the point is, we would like to understand that use case. We would like to be convinced yeah. that it is there's no other way around. Yeah. All right. Then uh, I think we'll. I'll, I'll just give a link to uh to Barry and the others from the skip team Nikhil uh I'll give them a link to the to the conversation or, or Bez maybe if you are in conversations with them like synchronous calls yeah I'll I'll ask them I'm curious myself I would really I'm, appreciate yeah so primarily we need to understand the the use case and how how important or critical it is and then mm -hmm. yeah. awesome okay cool uh last topic unless uh unless everyone has Pressing uh, other concerns, I just wanted to give an update on where we are with PBTS, with V1, and on commit BFTRS front. Any pressing concerns, or should I go? Go once, twice. Okay. PBTS uh, considered code complete. I think there may be still one PR on two PR in two, two PRs in flight. Correct me, Daniel or Sergio. Uh, we've been doing QA for more than a week now. I think we started last Wednesday or last Thursday. Uh, it will need to still block on final QA. So regardless of what we find in the initial QA, there will also be what we call a final QA. Uh, and that will go once we get the green light from the SDK and IBC Go teams, primarily the SDK team, uh, on uh, on the APIs, whether they're, they're, they're okay with the APIs we're introducing because we're introducing a lot of API changes. After the final QA, if everything looks fine, then we're going to do the release. We're hoping, generally, we allocate two minimum of two weeks for QA. This time, the QA got a bit more bloated because we also are introducing a lot of changes at the storage. 
uh, introducing PPTS that we also want to test. We're also assessing uh, all of these uh, conversations about P2P Storm and kind of introducing more um, more say pro or providing more sane defaults. All of this kind of goes into the QA, which balloon the beta scope. So maybe we'll need more than two weeks as we usually do for final QA. But uh, with a bit of luck, if we get the, the, the green light from the SDK, we can still release it before the end of March, but it's becoming uh, by the day kind of less and less likely. Uh, but yeah, that's that's where we are. On Comet VFTR restaurant, Sergio, go. Oh. You're either muted or we can't hear you, Sergio. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was muted. So yeah, I was saying like, since Alex is here and Marco was there, maybe you can make me watch the recording, keep us honest. If it's, you know, what, what I'm gonna say is like, remember that our, our agreement with the SDK is such that we actually are gonna cut an, a release candidate. We, we we usually don't cut our final release until the SDK cut their release candidate just to make sure, you know, that everything works, that, you know, there are no last minute changes that basically if we released already, like are too late, they are too late to, to release. Okay, so just wanted to clarify on that. So so the goal here is to reach a release candidate status to allow uh, the SDK reach release candidate, mm -hmm. because then at that point for us, it's just like a matter of 20 minutes to cut the final release. And this gives the, the SDK an opportunity a last minute opportunity to say, hey, wait a minute, this is broken. Let's basically fix it. If you have already a release. Yeah. Yeah, we're anticipating an alpha this, this month. That's, for the next, that's awesome. for the next, yeah, for the next major SDK release. So the, the alpha will allow us to start the QA. And then mm -hmm. once you once the SDK cuts the the release candidate, then we're mm -hmm. gonna do our final. Supposing we finish, but yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, just a quick question. I I wasn't on the uh, original call where this PBTS uh, was discussed. Is there are there any kind of configuration parameters or on chain parameters that require or or facilitate the usage or enablement of this feature, or is it kind of just yes automatically? Yes, supported? Lauren. Yes, yes, Alex. Lauren from our team opened uh, an issue on SDK, and she, she, I think she followed up with some of you to make you aware mm -hmm. of that. So there are three, three oh, new okay. parameters in constant. Oh, right. There's the, yes, I remember. Yeah, like there's the, um, right. Okay, yeah, I, I recall. Those are on-chain parameters? Yeah. Consensus parameters? Okay. Great. That was my only question. Thanks. I think this might be it. Uh, if I re yes, refactor enable feature params and PBTS fields. Awesome. Yeah, uh, that's a looks, good point. This looks right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yep, that's the one. <laughs> All right, final two minutes of the call, and then uh, maybe I even finish before the two minutes. So, commit BFTRS. Uh, this is one of the last things that we wanted to do as transitioning uh, out of the tender mint, uh, let's say namespace. Uh, we're still testing and validating against IBC clients and relayers. So Comet BFTRS is mostly a client library, and it's mostly useful for Rust-based app chains, Rust-based client libraries, Rust-based uh, integration points like the relayers. Uh, we have been able to find a workaround. This was like a blocker on upgrading the protos. And I think we did find the workaround in the meantime. Uh, so we are able now to create to instantiate uh, at least a relayer, uh, the Hermes relayer, using the Comet BFTRS v1, uh, it will be uh, aligned with uh, Comet BFT v1. Uh, so we have been able to instantiate the Comet BF, uh, Hermes relayer with v1 uh, protos, but we need a chain to test. So until SDK and IBC Go has um, has a chain that works with Comet BFT v1, we're actually not not able to to test. And we don't feel comfortable releasing Comet BFTRS until then. Uh, that's that's the state there. Glad to follow up on this topic in a lot more detail if anyone has concerns about it. Otherwise, that was it. Uh, I know that there was also Teddy Brandon from uh, DYDX. Did you guys have follow up questions on PBTS from our from? Okay, not. And anyone else, Nick, uh, anything from your side? Otherwise, let's wrap it up.